Hello, Maverick Traders. Welcome out to your market roundup, October 9th, 2023. Let's jump into it. We like to take a look at the markets from a top-down approach, see what's moving in the markets, and certainly war breaking out uh, in Israel-Palestinian conflict. That is a bit of an issue for markets. You've seen commodity markets react. We're going to take a close look at gold and oil and some of those commodities today. We always talk about what's moving in the markets, where uh, sectors are getting beat up, or what looks most enticing, and then we'll highlight a few trade ideas, bullish, neutral, bearish, and such. Disclaimer. This video was created for professional stock and option traders. Maverick Trading is a proprietary trading firm that employs professional traders around the world. Our traders trade firm capital and keep 70-80% to 80 of profits they generate. All trades and analysis in this video are for professional traders only. If you are interested in becoming a professional trader for Maverick, click the apply button in the video description. Let's break down what happened today. So today was certainly a case of bad news, good price action, and yet you've got to give the markets credit. So if you just said, well, a conflict breaks out in the Middle East, bombs are flying, what's going to be happening? Uh, this broke out over the weekend, you probably wouldn't have guessed that the markets would be up 1%. And they came in pretty much flat on the day after a, a slight gap down. So I give the markets a lot of credit here. Uh, we see good price action out of equities. Now, oil and gold responded, oil up 4%, gold up 2 So equities risk-taking was still intact from Friday's reversal. And if we look at the news, it's all about that Palestinian militant group that attacked uh, Israel. Israel has now ordered a siege of Gaza, and they want changes in the Middle East and so forth. This is not going away anytime soon. The question is, how much does that impact U.S. equity markets? And for now, the markets are shaking that off, certainly. Uh, you've seen the commodity markets react, but I think that's where it's a bigger issue. Now, if we look at the advanced decline line, about 60% of stocks going up. And if we look at the 50-period moving average, it's actually an improvement. So we have now 20% of stocks above their 50 MA. Last week, it was less than that. So we're seeing some broad improvements that way. As we look at the equity markets, big reversal happened on Friday. Uh, really, we haven't gone anywhere for the past couple of weeks. We've been at these price levels for the last little bit. Uh, have we set a bottom? We'll see, but ultimately equities traded very nicely today on some bad news. There could be a little bit further push maybe into this gap area and such. And I'm also seeing as we look at sectors and look at markets, there's just improvement in equities right now. So I don't know that the bottom is set, but certainly a bottom has been set. Uh, looking at the NASDAQ, you can see the downtrend line. You can see that we're still in sort of a descending triangle, but maybe a little more upside to the top end of that channel before we have more to worry about from this standpoint. Now, equities, as would be expected, energy was the outperformer today with oil up 4% on the new uh, war breaking out. And this is, again, something that equity markets are going to be dealing with for the next few weeks. There's going to continue to be conflict in that region. This is, you know, perhaps something that will continue to play out. We're seeing the reactions. Look at the other area that was very strong, aerospace and defense. So uh, it makes sense that you would look to defense companies. Some of these companies will supply a lot of the weapons and uh, planes and helicopters and all the different things that could be out there. So those are the areas of strength today. Now, possible trades. We're going to highlight a few different names. The last few weeks, I had highlighted more bearish than bullish. This week, I think there's more opportunity maybe on the bullish side, just better setups to, to my eye. So maybe we have a little bit more to go was kind of my takeaway. Palo Alto Network, we're coming up towards that upper resistance line. If we draw that out, you can see that we had set a little bit of a higher low, whether you call this a cup and handle, ascending triangle. We're coming up into resistance, but it looks very strong. You could have a little bit of a consolidation and then further 
upside breakout in PANW. Also, XBO just broke out, SBO Logistics. You can see the resistance. It has stalled there for the last couple of months, and now we have broken out. There aren't too many that are making new multi-month highs, but this would be one of those names. So the bullish names look intriguing. Now, if we look at gold markets, gold has been in this big lower channel. If you look at the top end of the range and the bottom end of the range, these are sort of parallel lines here. And we basically have been in this huge downward trending channel. And we just went down to the lower end of the range and now we've popped to the upside. The gold markets, I wouldn't be inclined to necessarily chase, but I would anticipate that we continue to see more upside in the next few weeks. So gold, silver, the commodity space looks like it's an area that can continue to rally. And then on the bearish side, I would look for things that maybe have just started to break down. This is a, a favorite pattern of mine. You can see the fresh reversal just now sloping down in some of those shorter term moving averages, just now getting bearish crosses. We had a recent breakdown. Now we've consolidated something like Cisco, CSCO could start to underperform here. I would expect a move down through the lower end of the range. This one's longer in the tooth, but still anticipating that following a little bit of a bounce or consolidation, I would just continue to expect more downside. You've got downward trends, downward slope in the moving averages, all of the price action still pointing to and suggesting that we will likely trade to lower prices. So markets are still in a downtrend. Precious metals and commodities, uh, some outperformance today, but really they had reversed on Friday and I think I would have had the same commentary, essentially, even if there hadn't been the news. The fact that equities were able to, able to hang in as well as commodities uh, speaks to equities having a little bit more stabilization. CPI data out on Thursday. Earnings season is now kicking off. This week, we get Citigroup and Delta, JP Morgan, Pepsi, PNC, United Health, uh, WBA, WFC, so Wells Fargo, all of these different companies, Walgreens, uh, there's a variety of different companies from different sectors, so plenty to keep us busy, but uh, the takeaway for me is the precious metal space look like a nice reversal. This just seems to be speeding up that process with some of the conflict. Equity markets, again, bottomed on Friday, big reversal, and able to rally through what should have if you were to just say, well, the equity markets, what are they going to be doing with this new war breaking out? You'd probably guess down a percent. If it was really bad, down a couple of percent. Instead, we're actually trading up on the day. That's good price action and may have a little bit more room to run. Hope you enjoyed the market roundup. Have a great rest of your day. We'll see you next time.